this is G with G Peppa Tree and I want to share with you the planner that I made and I don't know about you but I love looking through people's planners and just seeing what works for them and um, also to drool over how pretty they look like. So the first objective is just to give you an overview of the materials that I use to make my planner. This is not a um, tutorial of how to put it together. It, if there are people who are interested in um, that kind of tutorial, I may consider doing one. But this is just to give you an overview of the materials that I used. And uh, the second objective is to show you the functionality of the planner and how it is customized to fit my lifestyle and it might fit yours. So um, I'm excited about both components, the functionality and the looks. So let's get started. My planner has this front plastic cover and I also have it on the back here and the purpose of this protective covering is just to make sure that I don't accidentally lay my planner on a surface that had a little wet spot on it so this is just to protect my planner because this is got to last me through the whole year so I needed some sort of durability and protection I just went ahead and bought a frosted folder and I just cut it down to size and used it as my covers. Now for this binding right here you'll see that it's a wire binding and what I use to create this wire binding is this awesome little machine right here called the Cinch from We Are Memory Keepers and I've been eyeballing this baby so once HSN had a big bundle sale on it I bought it and they also have flex pay too so what could be better than that so this is the square hole punch they also have a circle hole punch but I went with the square just for the looks of it I might get the circle one day but as of right now the square is doing great for me and the reason why I went with this kind of binding the functionality of it is for one it is a whole lot less bulkier than your regular binders or if you're using um, one of those actual planner binders and not just like a regular three ring binder like you're using those planner binders you'll find that sometimes the the spine is bulky and for the for a notebook style it is going to be a lot smaller and it's um, it's probably gonna be easier to just stick into your purse or your bag so that's the reason why well, I switched over from my typical binder type of planner. Okay, well, let's just do a comparison. If you look at this, I have all these pages in here. And for this one, I have all these pages in here. And they're pretty much like the same amount of pages. Except for, um, even though they're the same amount of page, one is thicker than the other on the side. And so you can see that if you want something more compact, you'll go with this type of binding. Second reason is because I wanted to be able to fold over my planner and have it take um, half the space that it would if it was laid flat out open like this. So that's the second reason why I went with this kind of binding. And although I do love the um, ease of just using the rings and opening them and closing them, inserting and taking pages out, I decided that I could probably do something similar with this kind of binding. Like for example, this bookmark page that I made here, I just made it with little um, tapered notches so that I can just slip it in and out. And this little bookmark was also made with the leftover scraps from that folder that I was showing you a while ago of how I used the folder for my coverings and so this is just the leftover piece and I decided to make a little bookmark that I can just mark my weekly um, pages and the last piece that I used my little plastic folder scraps is just for this last pocket because I figured I would probably insert thicker documents back here like for example if I'm traveling then I would put my reservations or itinerary in the back here so just to give it more support for something that's bulkier so that's what I'm using that for that little piece of scrap there 
Now as far as the cover, I'm using chipboard and chipboard comes in various thicknesses but um, the chipboard that I purchased was for around five bucks. So it was five dollars or so and it's by recollections and I just cut it down to size and you get several boards in every pack so um, it's worth the money. It's pretty cheap. And I chose the thickest uh, chipboard that came in the pack but I'm thinking next year I could probably go with something that is not as thick only because I do have this protective plastic covering so I don't really need it to be as thick just to um, lessen the weight of my entire planner. Uh, as far as the designer papers like this designer paper, this one and this little live the dream and this um, foil polka dot white and gold designer paper here I use the paper pad from Craft Smith and it's their blush glam paper pad and when I saw this I had to get it and it was also half off so I got this for 10 bucks and or like I tell my husband $9.99 because you know it just sounds better and it is so gorgeous girls I mean if you find this at Michaels grab it there's so many possibilities and uh, with foiling being the current trend right now this would be a nice paper pad to get and in the back you do have these little cards which I took advantage of I cut them all out so that I can insert it into my planner use them for inspiration and that's where I found the live the dream little card right here and so I'm using that because I believe that we plan not just to keep ourselves organized but we also plan so that we can have a focus or a direction uh, to really live the dream and not just to live to uh, to just live but to really live the dream so um, I have it there and you will see back here I have this little charm and it's a little Eiffel Tower with a key and a little Florida Lee inside I think I have an extra one right here and I got it on sale at Walmart for 50 cents and it's flipped over and for me this was even though the key is useless it doesn't open any door any locks um, it's it just represents like a tangible piece something that is sturdy and tangible um, to remind myself that you know my dreams can be attainable and tangible just like this key is even though it doesn't function it just serve as a uh, some sort of inspiration for me. For the inside here you'll see that I implemented these elements of the black and white like the black and white um, script right here on my Eiffel Tower and the black and white stripes which is very nor et blanc or um, black and white is what it stands for but I also added black and white into the back pages and for this Eiffel Tower, I just had it cut out with my Cricut Explore Air and adhered it. It does come as a full image of the tower, but I wanted to snip it off and just push it off to the side because I fell in love with this ombre paper. It just looks like a pretty pink sunset. So I wanted it to just be off to the side so it looks like a whole scenery and just capturing it from the side. And as for this little sweet pocket here, I used these um, cardstocks that came from, I think it's My Mind's Eye or Lost and Found. I can't remember which one's the actual brand name and which one's just the design name. But um, it has a little glitter gold and I love the vintagey look alongside the glitter which I like to refer to that as vintage glam so that's my sweet little pocket and back here you will see that I also have a little banner here and it's also from the same designer cardstock as well and I just fussy cut what I wanted and stuck it on with double sided for this piece right here it's a transparency film but I didn't buy it I just took it for my Cricut mat. You know how the mat comes with a sticky transparency, with a film just to cover the uh, sticky part
part of a mat. Well, I used to throw them away, but I figured I'm going to just keep it and use it for a project someday, and I did. And I'm thinking that these film will be great if you have favorite boxes that have a little window and you are needing to buy a bunch of these transparencies, you might as well just save it from your Cricut and use it. So that's for my first impression there. And oh, this is also just to protect my first page here. It is cardstock and this is a nice thickness for cardstock, but because I will be flipping this the most, I wanted an extra protection and reinforcement. So I've noticed that it's been helping and I didn't think that I would have to do it in the back because no matter where you are in your uh, year, you will always be flipping this page the most. So I didn't think that this page back here would be flipped as much and I wouldn't have to reinforce it, but I'm thinking next year I might reinforce it because as you can see right here, it's, um, I don't know if you can see it, starting to wear a little bit. And so even though this is a sturdy text weight paper, um, I'm thinking if I would have protected it with a film, it may have been better. Lesson learned, we'll do that next year. About this piece of paper while we're here, it's a 32 pound text weight. So if you're looking for something to make a pocket, like this pocket that wraps around, uh, I would recommend if you don't want to use cardstock because it may be too bulky for a cardstock because it does have to fold and fit, uh, you might want to look into a heavy text weight, a premium text weight. And this is a pearlescent um, text weight paper. And isn't it gorgeous? It looks like it's satin and it's very pearly and shimmery and I just love it. So I used it here and here and it's sturdy enough to hold my things. For this tabby right here, uh, it just holds my finances, my monthly bills sheet so that I can have a glance of all my monthly bill and project ahead as to this check will cover all these bills so I don't have to worry about it. And so even though I use QuickBooks to manage my finances, I do like to have that visual in front of me just so that I uh, don't accidentally delete something and then you know not have something to refer back to it so this just says beautiful things in French all my tabs here they are not labeled with an actual name and that's because I figured I already know my planner I know what each section is I know that this first one that's glittery gold uh, it's going to be my monthly and then I already have this as my weekly and my yearly and my miscellaneous and finance tabs so I already knew what they were at first I was gonna label them but I was like you know what let's make it look pretty and fun I already know what they are so if you look at this it's just a little Avery tab and it wasn't in gold originally okay I just used a piece of designer cardstock and uh, used my circle punch to punch it out and trim it down to size and this is removable too, so if you're looking for something that's removable, then you want to look into Avery. Staples also has a brand that works just fine. My divider pages here all have a function because I wanted it to be more than just a piece of cardstock. I wanted it to be a folder also. So with every one of my dividers here, I had it with a different pocket design, like for example this one. It's just a straight pocket down here and for this one it's just a side pocket insert. I really recommend you to choose a heavier text weight paper and don't go with your normal copier paper of 20 pounds that's not going to cut it for you because even if you use a pen that doesn't bleed through the pages because a normal copier paper is so light you're gonna find out that you can see it on, on the other side and it's not gonna look pleasant as you're planning from week to week and month to month. The text weight that I use for my weekly pages were this um, Georgia Pacific uh, Super Premium Bright Ink and Laser Jet Paper and it's a text weight of 28 pounds so that's a really good text weight. As for my monthly pages, I was trying to find a legal size paper that was a heavier text weight, but at my local uh, 
staples they didn't have legal size paper that were over 20 pound text weight so what I ended up doing was I bought the Nina text weight uh, paper that were 11 by 17 in size and I just cut it down to the legal size which is uh, 14 by eight and a half so that's um, a summary of the materials that I used to create this planner and uh, I want to invite you to go on to the next um, part just to see the planner pages and how it works and to me this is probably the most exciting part is how it really functions in your life.